The Indian Army is expediting trials of advanced counter-drone technologies in light of escalating threats of swarm drone attacks from across the border. A senior defense expert confirmed on Friday that these measures are being prioritized following scenarios like Operation Sindor, a theoretical engagement against terror sites in Pakistan and Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. Speaking at the India Space Congress, retired Lieutenant General V.G. Khandair emphasized the evolving battlefield, where enemy retaliation may involve drones and loitering munitions. To counter such scenarios, indigenous systems like the Akashtir Air Defense Network are being integrated, enabling swift and coordinated responses through unified radar and missile operations. Condair highlighted India's standoff strike capabilities while reinforcing the need for ground troops to assert territorial control. He stressed that national security must grow in parallel with development goals, advocating for a secure and self-reliant India that embraces space as a strategic frontier. At the 2025 Paris Air Show, defense giant Safran introduced the Hammer 250 long-range low-yield munition, a major upgrade for precision airstrikes. Designed with advanced GPS INS guidance and optional laser or infrared seekers, the weapon offers meter-level accuracy at ranges beyond 70 kilometers. Its low-yield warhead is tailored to minimize collateral damage, making it ideal for modern, populated combat zones. This next-gen variant, Compatible with Rafale systems like Spectra, enhances India's air power by allowing standoff attacks on strategic targets while keeping pilots safe. The Indian Air Force, which acquired earlier Hammer variants in 2020, is expected to benefit from this system's extended range and operational flexibility, especially along sensitive fronts like the LAC. Analysts see potential for its wider integration across IF platforms. India is reportedly considering the purchase of two additional S-400 Triumph air defense squadrons from Russia due to the system's strong battlefield performance and the delayed readiness of its indigenous project Kusha. The move follows the S-400's successful intercepts, one at over 300 kilometers, during a recent conflict with Pakistan. While India awaits delivery of the final two squadrons from its 2018 $5.43 billion deal, Delays tied to the Russia-Ukraine war have slowed progress. Meanwhile, Project Kusha, spearheaded by DRDO with private sector partners, aims to deliver a comparable system by 2028-29. India is also eyeing Russia's advanced S-500 system, capable of intercepting hypersonic threats, though acquisition would need high-level Russian approval. The dual-track approach highlights India's evolving air defense strategy balancing urgent needs with long-term self-reliance goals. India's Mazagon Dock Shipbuilders Limited MDL, is set to acquire a 51% controlling stake in Colombo Dockyard PLC, Sri Lanka's top shipyard, for up to $52.96 million. The deal, MDL's first overseas acquisition, involves buying shares from Japan's Onamichi Dockyard, and aims to boost India's maritime influence amid rising Chinese activity in the Indian Ocean. Colombo Dockyard PLC, despite its strong technical legacy, reported losses in 2024, prompting the sale. MDL intends to stabilize operations through technology integration and expanded market access. Once completed within four to six months pending approvals, CDPLC will become an MDL subsidiary, giving India a strategic presence at Colombo Port, one of the world's busiest maritime corridors. This move also aligns with India's broader regional investments, enhancing MDL's global shipbuilding footprint and reinforcing India's long-term naval and commercial maritime strategy. In a notable shift in defense ties, China has reportedly rejected Pakistan's request for hypersonic missile acquisition and technology transfer. The decision stems from concerns over the potential exposure of sensitive technology to Western intelligence, as well as doubts regarding the performance of Chinese military equipment already in Pakistan's arsenal. Despite their traditionally close defense ties,
China has withheld export of its DF-17 hypersonic system, citing national security and strategic priorities. Pakistan had sought the missiles to counter India's growing hypersonic capabilities, including its HSDDV program. However, China's refusal has forced Islamabad to reassess its strategic plans and may push it to invest more heavily in indigenous research. This development reveals the limits of China-Pakistan defense cooperation, especially concerning next-generation weaponry with global strategic implications. India has dismissed the legitimacy of a Hague-based court of arbitration after it issued a supplemental ruling on its authority over the Kishanganga and Rattle hydroelectric projects. India maintained that the tribunal, constituted in October 2022 by the World Bank, was formed in breach of the 1960 Indus Waters Treaty. New Delhi has consistently opposed the court's proceedings and emphasized that disputes must be addressed through a neutral expert, which it continues to engage with. The Ministry of External Affairs called the court's actions a politically driven move by Pakistan, especially amid heightened tensions following the April 2024 Pahalgam terror attack. In response to the attack, India placed the treaty in abeyance and declared it would not uphold its obligations until Pakistan ends support for terrorism. This follows two formal notices issued by India in January 2023 and September 2024, seeking treaty modification, signaling a potential shift in India's long-standing water-sharing framework with Pakistan. In a move to shield its domestic jute sector, India announced on June 27, 2025, that jute and allied products from Bangladesh would no longer be allowed entry through land ports, with Nhava Shiva Seaport in Mumbai being the only exception. This decision follows earlier restrictions on apparel imports and is aimed at curbing the inflow of duty-free, subsidized Bangladeshi jute, which has adversely affected Indian farmers and mills. Despite anti-dumping duties, imports reportedly remained high due to Bangladesh's continued export incentives. Indian authorities highlighted depressed prices, underutilized mill capacities, and rising unemployment in jute-producing states like West Bengal and Bihar as major concerns. India has also barred re-exports through Nepal and Bhutan to prevent circumvention of these restrictions. India is reportedly preparing for sea trials of its K-6 hypersonic missile, marking a major milestone in its strategic defense capabilities. Developed by DRDO's Advanced Naval Systems Laboratory in Hyderabad, the K-6 is a submarine-launched intercontinental ballistic missile intended for deployment from the upcoming S-5-class nuclear submarines. These submarines, more powerful than the current Uri Hunt class, will carry heavier warheads and multiple missiles. The K-6 is expected to reach speeds exceeding Mach 7.5 and strike targets up to 8,000 kilometers away significantly enhancing India's second strike capability. It incorporates MIRV, or multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicle technology, allowing one missile to hit multiple targets with precision, and is designed to carry both nuclear and conventional warheads. This missile will surpass previous Indian SLBMs like the K-4 and K-5, as well as the BrahMos in speed and range. Once operational, it will position India alongside a select group of nations, such as the US, Russia, and China, that possess or are developing hypersonic, MIRV-equipped strategic weapons. The K-6 will also complement the land-based Agni-5 missile, reinforcing India's nuclear triad and strategic deterrence amid regional tensions with China and Pakistan. <laughs> India's aspirations to become a major defense exporter particularly through its indigenous Tejas fighter jets, are facing obstacles due to the aircraft's reliance on U.S.-made engines. The Tejas MK-1A currently uses General Electric's F-404 engine, while the MK-2 is set to adopt the F-414, placing the program under U.S. export controls like ITER. This grants Washington the authority to influence or block Indian sales to third countries, limiting India's strategic autonomy and global market reach. Defense analysts argue that advancing the Kaveri 2.0 engine project is crucial for breaking this dependency. 
Managed by GTRE, the Kaveri 2.0 seeks to overcome past failures of the original Kaveri engine and provide a fully indigenous power plant for both MK1A and MK2 variants. Reports suggest possible technical collaboration with Francis Safran, but decisive government funding is seen as essential. A domestically powered Tejas would not only free India from foreign vetoes, but also make the fighter more appealing to international buyers such as Argentina, Egypt, and the Philippines. In a competitive market with players like South Korea's KF-21 and Turkey's Khan, completing the Kaveri 2.0 is viewed as both a technological milestone and a strategic imperative for India's defense export ambitions. India is preparing for a major upgrade of its Sukhoi-30 MKI fighter jets, aiming to modernize avionics, enhance radar capabilities, and achieve 78% indigenous content. This comes shortly after the aircraft were used to launch BrahMos cruise missiles during Operation Sindor on May 10, targeting Pakistani air bases. On June 20, Defense Minister Rajnath Singh met Russian counterpart Andrei Belusov during the SCO summit in Qingdao, China. The leaders discussed regional security, cross-border terrorism, and expediting joint defense initiatives. Russia had earlier offered the AL-41 engine, used in its fifth-generation Su-57 for the Indian fleet, which currently runs on the less powerful AL-31. The upgrade plan includes integration of DRDO's UTAM ASA radar, Indian-made avionics, a new digital glass cockpit, and a modern mission computer. Hindustan Aeronautics Limited which manufactures the aircraft under license, is set to finalize a workshare contract for the upgrade. The move not only strengthens Indo-Russian defense ties, but also reflects India's commitment to self-reliance in critical defense technologies. Belusov reiterated Russia's support for India, condemning the recent Pahalgam terror attack. The enhanced Sukhoi fleet will significantly boost the Indian Air Force's operational capabilities. That's all from YKS team for now. Hope you liked today's video. Please subscribe our channel for more such videos. Thanks for watching.